Hello everyone. Today we are going to study the wavelength of a given source of laser light. So for this experiment, we need certain apparatus. So this one is the diffraction grating. This one is grating stand. This is the laser source and this is the meter scale. So here you can see the schematic diagram. This is the laser source. This is the grating stand and this is the grating here and when the laser light is incidented on this grating the diffraction takes place and this is the screen. So D determines the distance between the grating element and the screen. Now after diffraction you can see there are different spots can be seen on the screen. The central spot is known as central maxima. Then we will get first order spot, second order, third order similarly to the right side first order, second order, third order and so on. So this distance from central maxima to first order is D1. Similarly, this distance from central maxima to first order to the left side is D2. So we'll find out the mean, mean value and we'll get the mean distance for first order. Similarly, mean distance for second order, third order and so on. Now let us see some theory behind the laser. So first of all, what is a laser? The full form of laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, in order to have stimulated emission, now you can see from these two diagram, we will explain what is the difference between the spontaneous emission and stimulated emission. So, stimulated emission plays a major role for laser action. So, before that, let us understand what is spontaneous emission. Now, for spontaneous emission, let's say for, for example, if the electron has gained some energy from the ground state and goes to the higher excited state, now suppose the electron is here. Or the atom is here now when this atom will come back to the ground state it will lose one photon so this is spontaneous emission that means this emission is happening spontaneously without any uh, effect or without any external source but for stimulated emission what happens suppose the atom is in the higher excited state now when an incident when an energy is given to this atom in the higher excited state this atom comes back to the ground state with ejection of two photons. Now the difference between these two is that in case of spontaneous emission the photon which is released are not unidirectional. But in case of stimulated emission the photons released are unidirectional. So for laser action to take place we should have unidirectional property of the laser beam. So now let us see the working formula for determining the wavelength of the given laser light. So using the Bragg's diffraction equation which is the famous from famous Bragg's law we can use this formula to determine the wavelength that is lambda is equal to 2.54 sin theta by nn. Here small n determines the order of diffraction that means you can see from here from central maxima to first order, second order, third order and so on. So in this way we will get the n values, small n values and capital N is the number of parallel lines per inch on grating element that is LPI. So the grating which we are using it is composed of or it is made up of 2500 LPI. So now look at the let us look at the experimental part. So when this laser beam is falling on this diffraction grating you can see there are different spots can be seen on the screen. So the central part central spot is known as central maxima and after that you can see first order, second order, third order towards right. Similarly first, second, third, fourth towards the left. So this is this shows the diffraction pattern and we will we will take this diffraction spots on the on a piece of graph paper and then we will locate the distance from central maxima to the first order that is D1, then D2, D3 and finally we will find out all the distances and then we will plot in the table. So now we can see that from the tabulation that this is the diffraction order 1 to 5 and this is D1, second column shows D1 that is the distance from central maxima to first order in the left hand side which is in centimeter. Similarly D2 is the distance from central maxima to the right hand side and then we will find out the mean that is D1 plus D2 by 2 and sin theta that is Dm by Dm square plus capital D square root over that means you can find from here. Then finally we will find out lambda value using this Bragg's law that is 2.54 sin theta by small n capital N. So in this way up to fifth order that is fifth diffraction order we will find out the lambda values and finally we will find the average lambda that is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus up to lambda 5 divided by 5. So we will get the lambda average. So now we can see this is the final graph which we will get after performing the laser experiment and from here we will determine all the values D values corresponding D values from central maxima for first order, second order to the right side and also towards the left side and then we will substitute these values in the table. So after substituting all the D values in the table then finally we will find out the wavelength for each diffraction order and finally we will get the 
laser wavelength. So this states that the laser light which we are using it is a semiconductor diode laser and the range should be in the range of 620 to 700 nanometer. So roughly we will get around 650 nanometer. So these are few applications of laser like metal cutting in signal transmission, spectroscopy experiments and medical applications. So finally we complete our laser experiment.